I live in a town where you can still hear church bells chime on a Sunday morning, where families gather with pride to watch their children grow like flowers in the sun. We honor the brave who sacrificed for our country and those who continue to serve and protect us. In the spirit of love, belonging, and acceptance, this program was created. I'm Marie Wyman, and welcome to Close to Home. Hello, and welcome to Close to Home. Today's guest is Daniel Beef Mazzola, who holds the rank of sixth degree black belt in Shaolin Kempo Karate and has taught both group and private lessons since 1991 at Valari's Martial Arts Center in Natick. He holds the title of Reiki Master Teacher, Master of Masters, and has developed a wellness group. He is qualified to participate in Healthways Whole Health Living Network as a complementary alternative medicine energy healer and was featured in a cable production, Qi Kong. In addition to other educational speaking venues, he has spoken at nursing classes at Rhode Island College, patient account managers quarterly meetings on stress, and is accredited by the state of Massachusetts to award continuing education units to nurses. It is my pleasure to welcome you, Beef. We're glad you could be with us today. I'm happy the way you just say beef <laughs> with no problem. <laughs> a lot of people have uh, issues with that. But, uh, well, you're yeah. my cousin. Let's get yeah. that straight. So I'm very familiar with the word beef. <laughs> and they all say, are you that meat guy that we always hear about? So. Oh, one of the things that I remember from childhood was the fact that you are always so much taller and larger than me, but that's okay. Thanks. Well, look at 30 years of martial arts and I'm so uh, You're spelt. thin. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get right into it. I'm sure our audience is really excited about having someone um, so educated in the martial arts field. Um, tell us how you really got into martial arts. Well, it really started with the, I'm going to date myself here. <laughs> But back in the day with the Green Hornet and Bruce Lee was Cato, and it just blew my mind how somebody could move that way. But when I tried to uh, join a local karate studio, they always, a lot of my friends said, Beef, you're too big, you know, you have to be flexible, but that is not true. And even till today, um, I've taught all different types of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other thing I've heard in the past as well is that, oh, it's only for kids, and that's not true. No, that's not true. Well, can women do that? And I kind of laugh because, do you know how many times I've been thrown on my back by women? <laughs> I saw, so, I saw, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw so. um, someone do that to you recently, actually. <laughs> but I uh, uh, grew up in Brighton, and um, we moved to Natick, 1984, and my wife, Emily, got Danny involved in the local Valari studio. And um, I was blown away that she did that because I've always wanted to do it. So I started at that point. Mm -hmm. Danny and I both uh, went through the ranks together. Mm -hmm. I don't your even son. know if you know that. Yeah, your son Danny. But uh, when you know high school came, Danny did the football and baseball and stuff like that. But I continued on uh, again 30 years to get to this rank. Mm -hmm. And it's a pyramid effect. There are some statistics out there that um, say of every 100 students, one will get a black belt. Mm -hmm. And then the pyramid gets smaller. Right. Uh, fifth degree is a master. Mm -hmm. So I'm affectionately called Master Beef. Master so, Beef. By the students. <laughs> Although I did want Emily to start calling me master, but that... <laughs> that didn't go the, over too big. <laughs> I got a dope slap of that. But uh, to get to the rank of fifth degree master, now the pyramid gets smaller. And uh, I heard statistics, it could be 1,000 black belts, only wow. one will get okay. a fifth degree. Okay. So uh, again, uh, I'm a sixth degree and I'm 30 years into the style. Right. right. So you, uh, you also had 
um, from what we discussed uh, previous to this, you also had a connection. Um, you had a former career in corporate, and you also had a connection mm. with the corporate life as well. A very um, you know stressful position. And tell us how that um, kind of led you into uh, the 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 uh, stress um, release and relief kind of breathing and exercises that you teach? Well, um, I worked 38 years in corporate and uh, I was responsible for all the computer technology for six hospitals. Mm -hmm. I was on 24 hour a day call. Now when stuff got to me and bubbled up to me, that's a problem. Right. So right, it's not an right. easy call. Right. Um, especially meetings. Uh, I would call these meetings and uh, some of them were hostile because I, there were problems at the hospitals that they were getting back to me to fix mm -hmm. immediately. It's patient care issues. Mm -hmm. So there was so, a high level of stress uh, it was involved. Tough, yeah. So how did you deal with that in, in so far as the martial arts uh, well, was concerned? I used martial arts uh, in those meetings actually mm -hmm. to get people off balance. Although I wish I could <laughs> jump across the table and rip somebody's throat up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would keep people off balance in the meetings. Uh, just a quickie example is I had a room full of 40 people. Uh, I was on video uh, with dual plasma screens with all the hospitals. Mm -hmm. They kept a seat at the head of the table for me. Mm -hmm. I walked into the meeting and I started walking around and talking and everybody mm -hmm. was antsy. But I did that on purpose. I was getting them off balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, excuse me, Beef, would you like to sit down? I go, no, does that make you nervous? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, that's good. So let's start talking now. So yeah. I use martial art principle of getting people off balance so for their, that. So their, their guard was down so they'd be more yeah. honest and Right, and accepted. then we could start talking right. instead right. of and all real. that baloney. And real, right. instead of going in there with a set plan or going in there with some kind of a problem, you've got to leave that at the door when you come into a meeting like that. You know, the other thing, yeah. though, I cut my own throat, as I was telling you earlier today, that uh, I was responsible for the help desk that uh, managed all the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be at the corporate data center that day. I had multiple offices, and uh, they said, Beef, would you mind terribly doing a meditation <laughs> for yeah, us at this, lunchtime? This is a good story. You know, and I said, yeah, guys, uh, no, that would be a really good thing. Just make sure you're covering the desk. Right. So I had time that day and I brought everybody into the uh, conference room and I started my guided meditation and I was talking. So 45 minutes go by and the majority of them were snoring. <laughs> and I went, oh, this is great. I got to put these guys back, back up. To work. So I had to wake everybody up and they were all going, they were all like mellowed yeah, out. Really. So. so that really made a difference oh, in yeah. their whole um, attitude that day. I mean, you well, could see the results so immediately. Well, another thing is that uh, this was a common comment to me, is why aren't I being uh, more mad? What's mm -hmm. the matter with you? Don't mm -hmm. you know what's going on? Why aren't you more? Yeah. I said, I'm not going to do that. No. I did have a guy come to me, and this guy had a bad rep of um, just flying off the handle. Mm -hmm. He was one of the executives mm -hmm. at some, I don't want to mention where, but he came to my uh, office one day, and they warned me. He said, he's coming down. He wants to talk to you. One of your guys messed up. I'm sitting like this, he was at my desk pounding his finger, oh and I goodness. saw, he was red faced, and I mm. saw his arteries pulsating, and I looked at him calmly, and I said, wow, you look upset. <laughs> and that drove him, but here's the bad part of the story, a week later he died on the job from a heart oh my attack. Goodness. So I, it's I so, refuse to do that. Yeah, you know? so corporate life, it, it, so many people today have have commented no matter who you talk to oh, how stressful it is it's out there all it, over it's, the place it's out there and you know in fact our lives are stressful and and when we have to go to work and be subjected to that so these techniques that you teach right. are directly um responsible for lowering like blood pressure oh, and i understand that is a real uh, tell us about you're, that you're gonna like this because uh you know, I never go to the doctor. You know, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> well, I developed a cyst right here, and it mm. got infected. It mm. was ultra hot. It was mm. so infected. Mm. And Emily said, well, you, you're at the hospital all day. Will you just go get this fixed? So I said, yeah. So I called the surgeon, and 
uh, he said, do you mind if I have a group of uh, residents yeah, watch look, what I'm right, going to do? And right. I go, no, that's all right. So I'm lying on the table, and I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie to you, you know. Of course, because, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, he's shooting me up, and he's talking to these group of residents around me, takes the scalpel, and I'm rolling my eyes, and he's starting to cut. And I said, you know what? I should practice what I preach here. Mm -hmm. So I started breathing and meditating, and in my style of martial arts, I, uh, there's forms, combinations, and I was doing mm -hmm. everything in my head. Well, all of a sudden, the, the room fell silent. The surgeon slapped me in the face, and he goes, are you all right? Oh. And I said, I looked at him, and I said, what did you, I started, my blood was poor. <laughs> I said, what did you do that for? He goes, I thought we lost you. Are you okay? Wow. I said, That's I was meditating, relaxed. you guys. Yeah, yeah you, know, you, you he, were really trying to right. deal with it in your own way. Right, the I way didn't want you've to take been, anything. Wow, that is really fascinating. So that, that did help me. My pulse was down in the 50s. Hmm. Blood pressure was normal, That's everything. Excellent. But that guy had a hit me. He says, well, just, just go back and meditate. I was like. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to meditate on you, right? Well, you know, we, we talk about the martial arts, and I understand there are hundreds of martial arts styles, yes. but the origins um, go back <coughs> um, a thousand Usually years or more in, in the temples, the Shaolin, um, the, the monk temples you know, in there, China. There are diagrams out on the internet that uh, mm -hmm. if you think of a big oak tree and uh, mm. the Shaolin style and then all the branches of the trees. Right, right. You know, so exactly. you, you can see how everything has flourished throughout the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the studios you see in, in Massachusetts uh, I'm going to tell you one time or another studied in the Valari system. Mm -hmm. They might have gone off on their own way, um, but they, they've all, the, uh, the Valari system's been in existence since the 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, I've been, I've been in Natick uh, since. Uh, and you've, you've taught hundreds and hundreds, oh, hundreds. of students. But um, I, I, and you, and you, we talked about too, how some of your students and, and people that you've, you've, um, you know, taught in different aspects of the martial arts and Reiki, because we haven't even gotten into yeah. that yet. Um, they've been very mm -hmm. distinguished people. Yeah, I don't want to mention, mention too many any names, names or but anything. There's but there's been uh, people that have had, and you know, you would never think that these people have anxiety attacks or stress right. Attack, right. attacks. But I gave them uh, certain meditation techniques that they could use, mm -hmm. and. Um, I was at a big graduation ceremony in downtown Boston, and somebody said, oh, this person's looking for you to thank you, had another anxiety attack, but used your mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. instead of taking, you know, Valium Yeah, it's, it's the non-drug approach. So. People are really interested in that non-drug approach. And the mind-body connection, uh, we also talked about recently how when one practices um, certain forms of the martial arts, that the mind-body connection, um, it helps the left brain, the right brain. It, it, tell us about that um, um, young student of yours who was quite an athlete. T tell, tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, there was uh, one day uh, uh, they came to me and said, we have a new student, this woman wants to come in and take your classes. I've been teaching, uh, like you said before, adults mm -hmm. Saturday mornings for since 1991. Um, quick story is they went to uh, Florida for a meeting, mm -hmm. some of the guys at my school, and they said, Beef, somebody come up to me and said, in Florida, hey, is Beef still teaching Saturday morning? <laughs> I love because that. Because our, our studios are all around oh, the world. Yeah, it's connected. Yeah, and one right. of the local studios to here is the Westboro studio. Mm -hmm. It's uh, on the Route 30 circle. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're all over the place. But this woman that... Um, uh, came in, I, I watched her, I was doing drills, punching, kicking drills, and she never had any martial arts, so mm -hmm. uh, she was, I had about 20 people in the class and she was following along. So I said to her, just relax, just follow them along and I'll keep an eye on you. So I'm barking out these commands yeah. to do this, 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 and this. But I noticed she was off a little bit, like on her left side. Mm. So I went up to her, just discreetly, I don't, and I, I said, I noticed you, you're a little, off on your left. She mm -hmm. goes, it's funny you said that because I won a scholarship, believe it or not, to, I forgot what college, for soccer. Mm -hmm. And my coach sent me to your class to get balanced. See, isn't that amazing? And I said, you, don't you kick with your left? <laughs> and and yeah, she goes, yeah. I know, but I'm not balanced. 
So I helped her with that. That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, and, and you know, you've helped a lot of other people too, as well, haven't you? Uh, it, I've helped people from. It doesn't matter what age. I just recently had a 70-year-old come and wanted to learn meditation. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody gets to this point that uh, I always tell people that, let me know how you feel tonight because you're going to get a good night's sleep. And everybody looks at me and says, <laughs> I'd love to have Have that. a good night's sleep. Really? Well, what I was really impressed was uh, when we talked about this. Um, in your corporate life, um, you developed a stress relief uh, classes for the nursing staff and you also were approved by the pain clinics mm. and the state of Massachusetts also for the, for continuing education. Um, anybody can participate in this. Oh, but, I but, hear that all but, the time. But tell yeah. us how the, the benefits um, really helped the nurses and people that had that stress in, in, in the workplace. Well there was a thought out there, um, I didn't mention this before, but um, you know, during the day, you're in classrooms or you're in work and mm -hmm. something happens, you have this mm -hmm. stressful situation. Subconsciously, you don't have a retreat mechanism. Right. So that you have nowhere to, to think about to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the thoughts it's is true. that if you develop a meditation, and I'm going to talk about no mind, because every mm -hmm. time I talk about that, uh, people go, beef, I, I, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm so afraid of not being in control. Right. I go, that's right. Right. It's, a, it's kind of a paradox. I want you to have no mind so you're in more control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then in the stress, stressful situation, you can retreat back to that no mind and calm mm -hmm. everything down. Mm -hmm. So the nurses had an interesting question, and uh, uh, this never occurred to me. Some of the nurses worked on CCAP. So the drugs and you know alcohol. And explain alcohol what that and, is exactly. It's like a drug unit. Mm -hmm, uh, people mm -hmm. uh, with severe problems. Yeah, yeah you know, really uh, severe. Right. Well, one of the nurses said, "Beef, I, I know what you're teaching me with the stress and uh, uh, anxiety and all this stuff, but I need, if you can, help me with with martial art mm -hmm. techniques." And I, mm -hmm. you know, I said, "Why?" Why is that? Yeah. And this scared me because she said, "You don't understand. Some of these people go off the deep end." Mm -hmm. And she said, "I was in fear of my life one night. I worked midnight to wait. This mm. guy, they brought him in. He was strung out. He yeah, had he, AIDS. Yeah, well, that's and that's he a tried, scary situation. He tried to bite my cheek. Oh my and, goodness! And uh, they had to have security there, and they mm. had to shoot him up with sedatives. Mm. Mm. So uh, that was an interesting case because how do I?" subdue Guide this her. person or yeah. do but she's right. and that was the other guy that was in the class was in the psychiatric he said can you show me something but not to hurt the person right. to just subdue because, them <laughs> because of the legalities and right. everything else right. that right. was an interesting uh thing so see this whole what we talk about when when we're talking about the martial arts this is really something that is developed into a lot of different um, avenues in life oh, oh, yeah. that, that can be put into different situations. Yeah, everybody thinks because I'm um, sixth degree that it's all to do with fighting and, and it's it not. is not. Yeah, it, it is it's not. It's that you mm -hmm. train to avoid a situation. Right, right. I mean, I but can, it's more of a it's more of a discipline to it, discipline exactly. yourself, isn't that the, no, from it, what I'm I'm getting from you exactly. too? And to prevent um, it, in, if you had a job to prevent that stress and overload by all these breathing techniques. I've had to use them myself. A right. Case, those meetings, the surgery. Right. The, it, and it, it's yeah. really a question of uh, it's a it's a complete package. It's not just the defense, oh, you I, know, self-defense um, um, part portion of it. But there's many you know areas that that you can go into, and and I think probably one of the most interesting aspects of why we wanted you to come on the program is because you also are um, a master in Reiki. Right. And I think we would love to show our audience some of the breathing that goes along with stress reduction. So I think we're going to take a break. And right after the break, Beef is going to demonstrate some of the um, styles and some of the techniques of reducing your stress through the proper breathing techniques. Hello 
and welcome back to Close to Home. We're going to demonstrate right now some techniques that Beef has developed along with his martial arts uh, program about stress reduction. And these exercises we're going to demonstrate for you. So take it away, Beef. Yeah, well, they, these are very simple uh, breathing exercises. Um, all of us seem to breathe you know, with all the stresses, uh, and as you go through life, you start breathing up in your chest. But if you ever know, notice a newborn baby, they're breathing down here. The belly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, one of the things that you want to think about is, if you have a balloon in your stomach, how would you inflate mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. So you want to try to get away from the breath being high in the chest, but lower. Mm -hmm. Again, with statistics, it's like a third of the population never get air in the lower third of their lungs. This is true, because yoga actually uh, yeah, uh, right. goes into that too, the breathing, the proper breathing. So um, in yoga, they may call it prana, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chinese is uh, chi, Japanese ki. So we're talking all about the same thing in energy. Mm -hmm. But one of the um, simple rising and falling hands that I mm -hmm. taught the nurses, mm -hmm. and uh, this would be that you start with your feet shoulder length apart, mm -hmm. and your back straight, uh, have good posture. And I usually tell people to just dip down a tad. It doesn't mean a mm -hmm. lot. And as you inhale, you bring your hands up, pause, and exhale, and sink. So you breathe in, exhale. Sometimes I'll tell people to try to breathe in for a count of three, for an example. Hold it, exhale for a count of four. So the funny part is uh, some of the meetings when I'd be late, I'd be doing this in my office. And I'd over here saying, oh, Beef's doing his thing again in there. But this, <laughs> <laughs> this calmed me down before the meetings. Mm. And the nurses enjoyed this. It's relatively easy to do. It's easy. And it's just breathing. But don't let your adrenaline kick in because you're going, you have to fight that. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to go up and down. But mm -hmm. this is gentle because the chi flows slowly through the body. Mm -hmm. And the chi is, again, remind your, us what that is? Your life energy. Mm -hmm. It flows through. It's... It's how the acupuncturists uh, change mm. uh, direction of chi to something mm -hmm. that's failing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the same thought process. Well, thank you for that, Beef. We're going to go on to the other interesting aspect of this whole um, discussion with our master today, Master Beef, is the Reiki component. Tell us, tell us how throughout the years that you have developed a rather interesting style um, and, and a shift, almost like a, a little bit of shifting going on. Tell us about that between the martial arts and the Reiki practice. Well, during my career in the hospitals, I always, I always heard about this uh, nurses having a healing touch. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't understand what that was. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I've done things with, with Chi, and I've, I've, we've demonstrated some stuff in the uh, uh, the studio on different things, but mm -hmm. this healing touch thing. So I did some research into it, and it and it was Reiki. Mm -hmm. So Reiki is actually two words. It's Rei and mm -hmm. Ki. So right. Ki is Chi, internal energy. Mm -hmm. Rei is universal or energy from heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how you put the two together. It's Reiki. It was it was. It's actually. 2,500, 3,000 years old. Right, right. I've heard that but, before. But uh, Dr. Asui, and uh, I do Asui Reiki, by the way. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. That's the one that's uh, accepted in the hospital community. Right, right. And we'll talk about that after we demonstrate a little bit of the Reiki. So I would like to dem demo okay. uh, just a Reiki session because, you know, uh, some people, some women have called me and said, Beef, I, I really would like this because I'm having this issue, that issue. Now, you're not going to touch me, you know, and I right. explain, no, you know, it's, it's more it, of an it's non-invasive, mm -hmm. it's, it's, everybody has different auras mm -hmm. and different layers of the aura, mm -hmm. so that I could start out touching your shoulders or the top of your head for the different mm -hmm. chakra points, the energy mm -hmm. points you mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. but uh, typically when uh, someone is lying on a table, you know, I'll have my hands over this person, and uh, more often, uh, people say to me, 
it's almost as though I feel like you put me in an electric blanket. I'm so warm right, with that. Right, I've heard this before. And they, they feel so, mm -hmm. so much comfort. Mm -hmm. But there's subtleties when you do a Reiki session on somebody. Reiki is putting somebody back into balance. Right. It's vibrations. It's actually mm -hmm. almost uh, based on quantum physics, on, on vibrations of particles. Mm -hmm. Because the thought is, is that if you are out of vibration in one spot, mm -hmm. you're out of balance. And that spot could be a source of sickness or whatever. Right, right. I've heard this before. And, and one of the things that we talked about, too, was that um, if, if you if you teach this to somebody, they can actually put themselves kind of in a, a almost in, well, you know, a uh, relaxation. I, I should mention this. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing about a sui reiki is when you are certified for reiki, you are put into attunement. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to tell you what that means mm -hmm. is that if you have not gone through attunement, you're like a radio that can't right, find a station. Right, right. When you're in attunement, now you're in harmony with universal energy. Right, and that actually, that's very, that's very interesting. And it's a whole nother program that, that we could whole, get into. That, um, but today, right now, we're gonna focus on uh, the, the uh, Reiki uh, yeah, I and, can do. And you'll, a, you'll show you'll show the audience how yeah, I can, that you would do some of that. So uh, usually, when I start, um, I go through my own. Mm -hmm. And again, for this is for another show. Mm -hmm. And what I could do here is, I usually start with people sitting in a chair, and it's hard mm -hmm. for us to do this here, but in the studio it is. And I, my intentions are for you. To mm -hmm. heal you. Mm -hmm. So another misconception about Reiki is that people ask me, am I draining your life energy? Mm -hmm. No, because I'm attuned. Mm -hmm. I'm a channel of energy to you. you now, I, I just want to tell, not to interrupt you, but just want to tell the audience that I do feel very warm right now. <laughs> And it's not because of the lights, because we've been sitting here, but I do feel the, like this heat on my shoulders, definitely. And uh, this is, now you're feeling heat, mm -hmm. so you're drawing from me, by the way. It's mm -hmm. not me doing it to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is one way that I do, uh, I do this angel circle once a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will go in the inner circle and do this. But then I'll also go above somebody's head. Mm -hmm. So for an example, I'm on the crown chakra point. Um, I will move down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I do this, and I don't want to put a thought into your head, but sometimes fe people will feel off balance when I do this. Well, I was kind of moving my feet because I have the wonderful shoes on that make <laughs> but me taller, no, but I some... was trying to get into a more comfortable spot because I was getting very relaxed and kind of, uh, you know, moving a little bit more, um, felt a little unbalanced. But then, uh, if you were lying on the table, I would go down the front mm -hmm. of your chakra points. Mm -hmm. But there's also corresponding chakra points in the back. Right. And without getting into acupuncture and mm -hmm. acupressure with all the meridians and channels in your body. Right. That's another. That's, that's a another, whole other, other thing. thing. But mm -hmm. typically, what I would do is move my hands over your aura, mm -hmm. and I will pick out a subtlety. Uh, sometimes people will come to me and they're, and I know what they're doing, they're trying to test me. Mm -hmm. And I'll feel something, and, I, and this one particular person, I kept going back to their abdomen. Mm. And, you know, sometimes I'll say to myself, am I imagining that or is that true? Mm -hmm. Well, at the end of the session, the person said to me, why did you do that? Because I have a problem there, but I didn't tell you that. And wow. I said, I knew it. There and, you go. You know, this one here, mm is your spinal cord. So I'm making a circuit from the base of, your spine, uh, base of your spine to the base of your skull. So for our audience, it's very non-invasive and, no. and not touching, and um, it's just a very benign kind of um, procedure. I, I mean, I, I do feel warm, I will tell you that. Um, but in some, in some aspects of the procedure, you will pick up 
as you said, almost like you, you mentioned to oh, me, blockages. Uh, yeah. That was something, well, thank you, that was very interesting. You mentioned something about blockages when you were working on somebody and, you, and it was quite noticeable oh, to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, tell us about that, Beef. Yeah, a few people that have uh, come to me that um, they've had, I've had people with colitis come to me. Um, Interesting. Uh, the, the most common thread, though, and it's kind of sad, is the stress and anxiety. So, yeah, And the I don't stress. care what age. It's, right, right. I've had right. everything. Mm -hmm. Now, tell, tell me, too, that um, when you were recently, I guess, involved with um, cooperating with a, with a high-ranking yoga person, um, they, they really were very interested in your techniques. Tell yeah, us about I, that. I've had some yoga instructors come to me. Um, for the purpose of learning some of these techniques that I do, mm -hmm. but they want to incorporate it into their yoga practice so that they, they have like an edge up on other yoga studios. Mm. So one of the comments I've had from a couple of, of these people is they don't understand how I breathe. Mm -hmm. And these people, they are incredibly fit. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm saying, you're talking to me how I can <laughs> breathe, breathe better than you. Yeah. Uh, beef, I, I don't know how you do that breath. Mm. So they wanted to learn how I can hold these, this breath and, mm -hmm. and, and control my breath. But it's all because of the arts as well. One of the things that people often do in some of the, the classes is I pick it out right away. They think that when you're throwing a punch, that holding your breath, you're stronger. Right. That's wrong. <laughs> that is so wrong. Mm -hmm. So I try, uh, usually in my classes, I'll do the first five, ten minutes on breathing exercises. I was very, not to interrupt you, but I was, uh, actually had gone through a class, and I was really surprised that... I remember, that. how many times did I tell you, will you breathe? Yeah, and I was I have to really remind surprised you. Right. that the breathing was so much an aspect of the martial arts, which ties in a lot with the stress reduction. Wait a minute, actually, you got dizzy, didn't you? Because I did. You because you were holding your breath, and I, I said, I you're holding I, your breath, yeah, and you I said, did. no, I'm not. I, yeah, and it you know, was. I, it was really interesting because um, Brigham and Women's Hospital has done thousands, thousands of, of Reiki treatments in over 30 departments right. uh, in their hospital. And they report that the patients do better and they're able to, you know, the less recovery time and pain management. Tell us about that. Well, um, I do a, we donate our time, my students and I, to uh, veterans once a month. Right. Uh, so uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. But once a year, I donate six and a half hours to the Cancer Relay for Life. Mm -hmm. And I uh, put a tent up, and I've had pe <laughs> You wouldn't believe how many people come into that tent. Um, cancer survivors, people that are undergoing radiation and chemo, mm -hmm. the doctors would um, tell them that you should seek out a Reiki master. Yeah, because I've heard, just yeah. to be, just to have calmness. Right. Um, and stress you know, relief. And listening to some of these people coming into the tent and what kind of cancer they have, right. and the nauseousness and all that, but Reiki s seems to help these people. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually in the in Alston, Brighton and Alston. I was doing my mother shopping for her, and I ran across a 70-year-old woman who knew who I was, and she said, "Beef, I'm a two-time cancer survivor." And I said, "Oh, did you ever hear a Reiki?" And I, she goes, "Yeah." And I saw him a Reiki master. She goes, you're telling me now? I could have used you because they gave me Reiki treatments. Really? So, That's amazing. So um, it does help. That is help. amazing. And I also want to um, tell the audience that you've worked with people with traumatic brain injury and also with uh, strokes and that sort of thing. It's trying too. to get people balanced mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. using both halves of your brain. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, like stimulating new pathways, isn't that, isn't that to true? Get, I mean, trying to get people to do this. I mean, this is a blocking mm -hmm. uh, exercise, but I'm talking to you and I'm doing this. Right, right. And, you know, and this too, this is another one. That, yeah, that it's, it's using both halves of the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, more often than not, new students come in and say, oh, I can't do that, I don't use my left. 
<laughs> you don't use you your left. left. <laughs> and uh, so I, I try to impress upon them that, no, we're trying to create harmony between mm -hmm. both hemispheres of the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, what you said, if there's an injury there, so, yeah. you just try to connect, right. make new connections and new pathways. Right. That, that's the goal. Some of the, some of the uh, subjects that we've touched upon today, we could do another oh, program on. I mean, yeah, it's just so I, fascinating. It, it wasn't fair because I'm... I'm we, really we just kind of right, everything. right. Which is kind of a very superficial. What we did today was more or less like a superficial touching upon how the martial arts right. and and the the stress reduction component of martial arts really does work in with the reiki and the healing, right. and right. and that what as we close our program, what do you think you would like the public to know about? the stress in our lives and about you know how we deal with it as, as people have come to me they said beef the reason i'm here is i'm so sick of going into a doctor's office and he brings out the prescription pad mm -hmm. and just writes me something that's just a band-aid approach yeah right there has to be something another thing i didn't talk i'll see again there's so much information, information. but even in reiki there's, there's no such thing as time and distance um, mm -hmm. You could, everybody's had traumatic experiences in right, their lives. Right. Part of Reiki teaches you to go back to that traumatic. Mm -hmm. Try to understand what happened there and send mm -hmm. healing to that and understand it. Well, it, 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 it's obvious that our society is so stressed out that we need to have non-drug approaches to our anxiety. We can't be all, you know, dependent upon drugs and, I, I mean, it's really difficult for, for uh, people in the world uh, to, to live with stress. Everybody, not just well, Americans, uh, everybody is. I do want to add this. Uh, I thought of this while we were doing the, some of the other discussion is that you know, I myself find that if I don't work out or if I don't do my things, mm -hmm. I feel that anxiety starting to go to up. To rise, right. And once I start working out, I do get that endorphin mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everything's right with the world. Right, and I'm exactly. Okay. It's not about fighting, mm -hmm. it, it's the opposite, which mm -hmm. everybody immediately thinks because you're a black belt that it's all fighting and how can you right. hurt somebody no it's the opposite it's completely the opposite right. and to leave our audience today with words of wisdom if you find yourself stressed out simple breathing exercises like we we just what we did today just, That's what just what we did a drop in the bucket just but and just take some time to sit alone it's for and, you and right. it's for you it's it's for every one of us to just be calm and try to enjoy our lives and if we find right. ourselves in that stressful situation we can always practice breathing the right way and exercising the right way well i thank you for coming beef it's been a quick. pleasure <laughs> it went very quick and we'll have to do another program again sometime but thank you and goodbye and we'll see you next time thanks for joining us though on close to home.